We're transitioning to a unit now on the reactivity of aromatic compounds. The very fact that substituted benzenes exist suggests that aromatics are capable of some reactivity, but a lot of what we've talked about to this point relates to the remarkable stability of aromatics, so there's a bit of a paradox there. How can aromatics be reactive and be so stable at the same time? While a lot of aromatic reactions do involve large activation energy and a large climb uphill to get to the first intermediate, after that they often return to aromaticity through the loss of a group, so that the overall result is substitution. So substitution results are going to be a big focus of the reactions in this unit. And because aromatics are like alkenes in that both contain pi electrons, we often think of the aromatic as a nucleophile. Electrophilic substitution reactions, where the reagents are electrophilic, are very common in an aromatic context. So, in this series of videos, we'll see a variety of reactions of aromatic compounds and look at things like what happens when a substituted benzene comes into play, when heteroaromatics come into play, and how we can do things like destroy aromaticity through reduction and further modify the aromatic skeleton to create interesting structures. We're going to begin with a lesson on the general reactivity of aromatics where we focus on keeping things general. And to start, I wanted to begin by noting the correspondence between alkenes and aromatics. Both are characterized by carbon-carbon double bonds. And in particular, we've seen that the alkene pi bond can act as a nucleophile toward a variety of electrophilic reagents and engage in addition reactions, such as the addition of Br2, halogenation, hydration catalyzed by acid, and even oxidation reactions like 1,2-dihydroxylation, or as shown here, oxidative cleavage. What happens when we subject benzene, which looks superficially very similar to this molecule, to the same reaction conditions? In fact, nothing happens at all. When we mix benzene with any of these three reaction conditions, we observe no reaction occurring. Benzene and the reagents just sit there. By the end of this video, you'll understand very well why this is. Although we just looked at three examples of reactions of benzene that do not occur, aromatic compounds can still engage in chemical reactions. This video serves as an introduction to aromatic reactivity. In general, we can divide aromatic reactivity into two classes. Those reactions that involve the aromatic ring as a nucleophile, donating a pair of electrons to an electrophile E+, and those that involve the aromatic ring as an electrophile, accepting a pair of electrons from a nucleophile nu-. In this latter class of reactions, what's typical is for the aromatic ring to be extremely electron poor, and to bear a leaving group or nucleofuge. This enables addition of the nucleophile to the electrophilic carbon bearing the leaving group. Because aromatics are, generally speaking, electron rich because of their high energy pi electrons, we see the ring acting as a nucleophile as shown here more commonly than the ring acting as an electrophile, but we'll look at both types of reactivity in this video. So why don't arenes undergo addition reactions that are typical of alkenes? Well, let's consider what would happen if Br2 added across the atoms of benzene, shown here. The resulting product would contain two new sp3 hybridized carbons, the carbons that develop the new bonds to the bromine atoms. And although two of the carbon-carbon pi bonds would be left behind, this molecule is non-aromatic because it's no longer fully conjugated. That makes this overall reaction heavily disfavored. In other words, delta G for the reaction is much, much greater than zero, very positive. And it's the destruction of aromaticity that helps explain why aromatics generally do not undergo addition reactions under normal conditions. That said, aromatic compounds do still engage in reactions in which aromaticity is not destroyed overall. We can destroy aromaticity as long as we restore it in a later elementary step. For example, it's possible to convert benzene into the substituted compound bromobenzene, in which a hydrogen has been replaced with a bromine atom. This reaction involves the use of Br2 as a reagent, but also requires a Lewis acidic catalyst, FeBr3, which generates a strong electrophile. And this is the species that actually directly engages with the benzene. In this case, it's Br+. Reaction of benzene with Br+, generates an intermediate that, at least for the time being, is non-aromatic because this carbon is now sp3 hybridized. However, after loss of a proton from this intermediate, we've restored aromaticity. Because one atom, bromine, has replaced another, a hydrogen, in the starting benzene, the overall reaction type that we're seeing here is substitution. And because substitution does not result in the overall destruction of aromaticity in going from the starting material to the product, it's a much more common reaction type for aromatics 
than addition. The reaction we just looked at is referred to as electrophilic aromatic substitution, or EAS, because the reagents used are electrophilic, and what's happening is the substitution of one electrophile in the starting material, H+, for another in the reagents, E+. The mechanistic paradigm that we just saw is highly general for electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. Where different EAS reactions differ has more to do with how the electrophile E plus is actually generated and the required reagents to do this. Here are some questions of interest as we look at electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. What's the nature of the true electrophilic intermediate and how is it generated? These are often extremely strong electrophiles, strong enough to destroy aromaticity without requiring a very large activation energy. What are the relative rates in this reaction of electron-rich and electron-poor benzenes? This is going to get us back to structural ideas about the electron density within these molecules and how that relates to the behavior of the aromatic in these reactions. What's the site selectivity of these reactions in reactions of substituted benzenes? Where does the electrophile end up in relation to a substituent R present in the starting material? And how do heteroaromatics react? The previous two questions about relative rates and site selectivity are relevant to heteroaromatics as well, as these may be electron-rich or electron-poor with respect to benzene. And just to give you a sense of the diversity of EAS reactions and the kinds of substituents that we can latch onto a benzene ring, I've shown five examples here that we'll address in detail. Each of these is associated with a unique electrophile. Br+, the NO2 cation, the SO3H cation, positively charged at sulfur, carbocations, R+, and what are called acylium ions, which are positively charged versions of carbonyl compounds is one way to think about these. We'll cover the specific electrophiles in more detail later, but all of these reactions involve the generation of a key electrophile and reaction of that electrophile through the paradigm that we just saw. Nucleophilic aromatic substitution involves the replacement of one nucleophile by another. A nucleophile nu minus supplied by the reagents substitutes for X minus, a good leaving group in the aromatic ring. Generally speaking, aromatic compounds are relatively electron-rich because of their high-energy pi electrons. For nucleophilic aromatic substitution to work, then, it's important that the arene be extremely electron-poor since intrinsically aromatic compounds are electron-rich, and this steals them against nucleophilic substitution because they don't want to receive electrons from nucleophiles. And so to avoid having to use extremely harsh reaction conditions like multiple hundreds of degrees C in temperature and extremely strong nucleophiles, it's important that the ring be made electron deficient through the incorporation of one or more commonly two or three electron withdrawing groups in the structure. The substrate must also contain a good leaving group because once the nucleophile adds, the key to restoring aromaticity is loss of the leaving group through a beta elimination step. And so the general mechanistic paradigm here is nucleophilic addition, or AD sub N, of the nucleophile to the aromatic ring, followed by beta elimination, kicking off the leaving group and restoring aromaticity. Questions of interest here include, again, the relative rates of electron-poor and even more electron-poor benzenes. How do heteroaromatics react, especially electron-poor heteroaromatics like pyridine, which are amenable to nucleophilic aromatic substitution? And how do these reactions occur mechanistically? Well, we've seen the paradigm, but there are a few more details to this, such as the question of what happens to the aromaticity in that intermediate of this reaction that are important to address. And addressing these mechanistic questions will help us answer the first two questions as well.